it's a 65. Does it really? Yep. Well, actually, the road work hasn't begun yet, so. Half a mile. Maybe at a half a mile, it'll say 45. All right, we're passing. He's bound and down, rolling out and trucking. We're going to do what they said can't be done. Just slam it.
know what. I'm not too familiar with anything with Dodge, really. That Chevy 1500. I The whole goal is to make a truck that is meant for traveling a long ways comfortably. So I need crew cab. I want four doors and I'm going to put a flatbed on the back with a gooseneck and it'll obviously have a pintle hitch and the whole goal is to be able to put the whole family in there, drive across the state lines and buy equipment and stuff from far away because right now the only thing I have is my pickup truck and the semi truck driving my other dump truck a long ways with the deck over trailer is just not really an option. It's just, it's not, it's not very economical to do that. It's not very comfortable. I actually can't put the seat back far enough to sit comfortably in that truck for a long time. So 
I need a four door cab. That's definitely a requirement. Right, guys so i am pretty excited about this this is going to be my dream truck right here so this is a 2006 international 4300 it's got a 33,000 pound gbw crew cab it's a six speed eaton
And the best thing about this truck is lots of space inside here. Full crew cab. I got my seat all the way back. I like to drive with the seat back a little bit more than usual. And there's still two and a half feet of room to that seat. All the seats in here are air ride. This truck has an exhaust brake, stock exhaust brake. Um, lots and lots of controls, lights, all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm gonna take most of that stuff off. Um, this truck only has 152,000 miles on it. And the hours are pretty high, which I kind of assumed that, but uh, let's see, what's that? 11,000 hours, that's a lot of hours. Uh, it's got a DT-466E, I think. I'm not totally sure on that, but it's, uh, I think it's starting to get into the max force, which I'm not crazy about and I haven't heard too good of things about, but I think it's under the year, I think 2010 is when they started to give them real big problems with the max force, with the DT-466. It turned into a whole different engine, but I think this one should be before that. I think it still does have EGR, but not anything else. So the whole purpose to buying this truck was so that I can go far away and still tow a lot of weight. So I want to be able to go across state lines, drive for four or five hours and pick up some sort of machine. This has got air brakes, so I can tow a pretty big trailer with it. Um, so the first thing I need to do with this truck is because it was sold to me from a dealer, I can't register it until it's inspected. That's the way it works when you reassign from the dealer on the title. So the guy sold it to me, but he couldn't sign the, I think it's MV53 form without having it inspected first. So right now I doubt it's gonna pass inspection. So the first thing I need to do is tear off the entire bed. I don't want any of that stuff. The crane sounds like a good idea. Possibly might put it back on, but I doubt it. Um, I think everything just needs to go. I just want a bare frame on the back. That way I can unbolt everything, redo the frame fully, and then start mounting stuff back. Only bare necessities that I need. And I was thinking I could bring the axle up, maybe 18 inches to give it a better turning radius, but I'm not totally sure about that. But I am definitely chopping it right here. So this last eight feet is going away. And by doing that, I can put it on my low boy trailer and bring it to the place that that'll inspect it and so basically the goal in this video is to get to that point where I get this inspected and then we'll do a part two and there's probably gonna be I don't even know like ten parts to this project this is gonna be a really big project I'm gonna do all kinds of crazy stuff maybe part three or four we'll get into converting it to four-wheel drive that's what that other FL 80 is for to take the axles off in the transfer case and switch this to four-wheel drive but for right now the first thing I want to do is get it so it's drivable, inspected, registered, insured, all that stuff. Ride it around, just kind of get used to the truck, take everything that I can off of it. Because I think there's about 10,000 pounds right now of excess weight that's just totally not needed. So I want to get rid of everything and I'll probably have to bring my crane over to do that because 10,000 pounds is a little bit heavier than most of the things that I have can pick up. So. I need to bring one of the cranes over and we'll try to lift this whole thing off at once but I'm not sure how that's going to go. Things are pretty rusted on here. The frame is not rotted but it's definitely crusty so we want to clean it up really good. The bed however is totally shot. I don't want anything to do with this bed. This is just scrap. So it's a shame because there's a lot of cool boxes. Look at that, there's a husky box right there. Lots of room to store all kinds of stuff. There's all these boxes, that box is access from the other side. Got this crane right here. Uh, it's in pretty bad shape. Like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna put that back on there or not, probably not. So, 
at a 20 foot radius it's only got about 2200 pounds but at a six foot radius it's up to 8,000 pounds so this truck is an old railroad truck you can see the axles for going on the train tracks so this assembly right here that's one inch thick steel right there and this is pretty beefy too so i'm gonna guess that all this stuff right here is probably a few thousand pounds just by itself and that was off of the front they cut that off and and then i think this was off the back so we got to get rid of all this stuff. There's the bumper for the front, which that's pretty substantial. So we're just going to work on this a little bit at a time, get this thing stripped down. This is a compressor, which is kind of weird. It seems like it is a compressor, but then it says auto crane on it. So I don't know what that's about, but, um, that appears to be a compressor that's an external tank and you can see everything is just really rotted out except for the frame the frame and all the main truck components are good just need some loving there's definitely a lot of boxes in here oh that's an inverter right there huh kind of cool that looks like a pretty big inverter actually I'll have to look up the specs on that oh look at that it works huh what do you know there is a 100 amp fuse here so 100 amps times 12 volts so that's about 1300 watt inverter seems like it should be more than that I don't know I'll check into that I assume this is where some tanks went. Looks like there were some welding tanks or acetylene or both. It's a shame because these boxes would be kind of neat to have on here, but at the same time they're all rotted out. I'd rather just make new ones. The plan in the future is to have two feet of boxes up front, to have a fuel box as well as a big toolbox accessible from both sides and I want it to drop down just like this one to have lots and lots of storage so two feet back from the cab is going to be boxes and then I was thinking a 10 foot bed from there which would bring me to about here and it would leave the axle way back here so I'm thinking maybe and I'm not totally sure but maybe I'll move the axle up 18 inches to give me better turning radius and we'll do all that stuff first and then we'll worry about the four-wheel drive later. That'll be the, one of the last things I do. So these boxes on the top are not really rotted out. So I might reuse them. I'm going to unbolt them from the bottom boxes. These ones never really saw any salt, so they should be fine. So I think this box here and this box here I could probably salvage and maybe use them to go across there. I think they're a little bit too wide, though. But I guess we'll see. But I'd rather unbolt as many things as I can before I take this off of here. And then that way maybe I can just use a telehandler instead of the crane. Because I have a feeling that when I lift this up, first of all, it's going to come off really hard. And when it does come off, it's going to be unbalanced. And it's probably just a lot safer if I can just unbolt as much as I possibly can first. And then take off the actual bed after that. Well, oh well. We'll just have to. We're just gonna have to cut pry the hinges it, here and pry it open or something.
cold at this altitude. <laughs> that snow up there? Yeah, it's snow in the mountain up here. design um all right well what we do i guess you want the outer one Just try to get them off. I don't know. Got that one. Got that one. Got that one. Of course, it would figure that the last one I wouldn't get. Cut it with a sawzall real quick. Or a grinder or something. Back. These 
these bolts in here are pretty crusty. There's nothing left of them at all. I wouldn't be surprised if this box just lifted right up. There's nothing holding it down. Take your forks and just put them in there and lift up. This plate is welded on here. That's the only thing holding it. There's another battery over here. Whoa. Was every bit of ball torque I had. Uh, okay. Okay. That was a thousand ball inches. A thousand inch balls. That was a thousand footballs. Tell me when you're good. Good. It fell off. Hold on. It's not on there, right? Is it not? Did it not work? Okay, it's on there. Good. Now this side. Of course you saved the hardest side for last.
I would save the hardest one for last. I do the easiest one first. That's a terrible idea. That's usually last report. Seems like a bad idea. As if... One, two, three. Okay. Well, either we broke everything or we got it. One, two, three. I'm sure it's probably spinning in there. Is that small? Putting on there, good to go. holding it on now a thousand good thousand, thousand pounds, pounds of rust balls thousand pounds of rust in this wire well i need a cutter or something
that. You gotta go above the metal. You gotta go into the tree a bit. So at this point we got a bunch of things off of here, take off some weight, and what I want to do next is come up with a plan for all the hydraulic hoses because there's a million of them. They're just absolutely everywhere and I don't have enough caps and plugs to cap off every one of them. Most of them are JIC, but I don't need any hydraulics on here except for maybe just keeping the pump on the transmission because I might use it for a dumping flatbed. But after the pump, I really don't need anything, and I'm not sure if I'm even going to keep that pump because two things. First of all, this has a six-speed transmission. I'm hoping to put at least a ten-speed in, so I don't know if that pump's even going to fit. And second of all, for what I need for hydraulics, I don't think that we need near the capacity. So this whole tank is for hydraulic fluid. It's like the same size as a fuel tank. It actually, I think it is a fuel tank. So... I want to get rid of this and I want to cut all the hydraulic sources right at the start. So the pump is right there and it goes right to this tank and there's these ball valves on here. I doubt they're going to turn though. Everything is so rusted out on this thing. No, oh, it actually did turn. Okay. That one turned. Let's see if this one. That one turned. Wow. Probably because it's got oil in it. That's the only reason. Let's see if the third one will turn here. Look at that. Okay. So I guess we can start getting rid of the hoses right after this tank. And then we'll take the tank out. 
and then we gotta just start removing lines and I'm gonna have a giant pile of hydraulic lines because there is a lot of them there's all this all that and all that some coming up to here that was actually hydraulic I thought that was an air hose but it's not that's like a hundred feet of hydraulic hose right there and then we got all these controls here controls there all those hoses right there and a lot more underneath that you can't see right now you got those for the outriggers there is just an absolute ton of hydraulic hoses here so i want to get rid of all of it and by the way that was the external air compressor tank nothing left of that Shouldn't be much in there. That's probably a drop in the bucket compared to what we're oh. going to find. <laughs> oh, yeah. Luckily, it's all on the bed, though, and not the frame. Yeah. I mean, the frame's a little flaky, but it's solid. Yeah. It's solid. Here we go. Before you get to the end, I would actually start cutting this side too. That way it doesn't flop down and start pinching this other side. Cool! We'll just start on my side here. And I'll start tugging some of these hoses and you can just tell me where they go to. Okay. Now let's start with this one. It goes right to that valve right there. Okay. All right, okay, lovely. You know, that way we don't have to cut the hoses over top of ourselves either. We can cut them over there at uh -huh. the end and put one plug instead of two. This is the first hose right here, this one. Okay. So that just goes to this valves here. Yeah. You think we should try to maybe take some of those off instead of these? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it might be worth it. Maybe it's not worth it. Hold on. You think? I don't know. I, I feel like some of these would probably come off. Probably not many of them, but you never know. Why don't you just grab a bunch of wrenches? Like, that's probably like a 19 or a 21. 
can see. What's J JIC actually should be kind of American, so maybe it's 97 hours, huh? Maybe the small pipe wrench too. That's off. You know, there is some stuff that we can salvage here. Like these there here's two forty fives. And here's two forty fives. And then this hose seems like it could, might even be in decent shape. Any fittings? And hoses. That's a Parker hose, so a lot Any? of places will be able to fit that. Let's try to see what we can disconnect right here. Let's just, anything that we can disconnect here, we can sort of bring it up to another place. What in the world? I would have never thought. This is going to leak like crazy until I get that off of there. I would have paid money to say that it wouldn't ever swivel. Oh. Well, let's, um, let's just put this tray up underneath there real quick. We'll grab everything and uh, just <sighs> That one comes off. I'm sure a lot of these will come off. I already got this whole valve disassembled, and I didn't think any of them would come out. Every hose you can save is a hose that you don't have to buy ever. Yeah, some of them I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get. If you can get this one right here, then you can get any any fitting that's all Holes are down. I think the real trick is this pipe wrench. I never would have thought. Shocking. Oh, that looks tight. 
tiny. I don't think I have anything small enough for that. Got it. And it's rubble too, look at that. Unheard of. This truck's got more hydraulic hoses than an excavator. Bucket we set on top holes drop the bottom and it doesn't matter. Yeah. I got a little impatient with most of these. What? I got a little impatient with most of these. I'm just gonna break them. You just cut them off? Yeah, just break them. We got like 20 hoses wow. disconnected here. Okay. I'll take the pipe wrench. start making a mental note of where
Okay, that's fine. Okay. Oops. All right, that's that one. And then this one is in that bunch right there. We should cut that. Cut this apparatus. Right Hold on, there's still there's one in here. And then all the individuals now. Yeah. One there. Alright. Do we have like a big barrel we can start putting these in? Like the, where's that half barrel? We can do that blue half barrel, yeah. <clears throat> oh wait, doesn't that isn't that filled with stone and stuff? No, the, the white one is the blue one's not. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I mean, let's just start eliminating hoses get them out of our way. These ones, they just go from there all the way to there. So, let's snip these here. Okay, this one goes to the front of the truck. But if we separate it right here. Uh-huh. Snippers. That one. out today yeah. okay. All right, so this one is just dead ends right there that one you can put in a barrel okay so this one and this one go up front so we'll leave those those are the ones that we want to plug up the ones that are going to the front yeah so if we just put a plug in that and put a plug in the other one, no, which mate. the other one has a plug in it already. This thing's dry as a bone. Well. For now. Yeah. We can start moving things around. Okay, so this one is already plugged. So since it stays on this side of the frame, we'll keep it over here. Okay. That way we can just sneak it through. All right, so what other crisscross things do we got going on? Okay, this one goes right over there. That one goes right to here, so let's get that one. And I guess these other two go to the front of the truck. So we'll put plugs on those. Oh man, we're actually organizing things. Thought that that would take weeks. Nope, less than an hour. Alright, so this one is going to be a big old. Okay, now we're in business. You didn't even have to go to business school. Just, I don't even really care about swiveling on that one because that's just dead ending over there. Although it would probably make it easier to turn. Just in a tight spot. I feel like cutting that one. Let's cut it. Okay. Imagine actually trying to like 
put this truck back into service, <laughs> oh figuring God. out what goes where for not only the hydraulics, but the electronics too. You'd, you'd be years on this. Yeah, well, I probably they probably figured that it would cost so much in labor to get that done that they yeah, that's why they gave up this truck for cheap. Bought a new one. Yeah. All right. There's one if you want to start sneaking that one out. All right. So that one is right here. Dead ends right there. That one in the barrel. All right, so pretty much everything except for this small little hose. Oh, that broke off. All right, that's good. All right, here we go. Right, so everything else here goes straight to the front. There's these. I don't know what these are. It's like air hoses or something. Straight spaghetti. Yeah, these are probably air hoses. Um, might as well just cut them while I'm here. nests, electric lines, Let's see here, snippity snip, I've got this box here that I can just remove in two seconds, I can do that. Okay. So everything is removed. All right, let's do the same thing to the other side. I have no idea what that even is. Um, can I see those cutters real quick? I just cut this last little wire. Okay. Well, I can go in a pile of uh, junk. Process of elimination. to get to it. So, right, so that stays. So we'll just keep putting the ones that stay off to the left. This one goes, uh, I guess that one, that one stays. All right, so here's the cap. I'm plugging that one. By stays, I mean for a few minutes until we separate the bed. Alright, so one time. Oh, that one stays. I feel like we should probably get those mini plugs out. It'd be perfect for this. Alright, so this one, this one stays. How about this one? So it seems like it just goes right there. Yeah. Stay tied in a knot right there. It's out of here. Station. Uh, I feel like all these small ones just get out of here. That one's kind of zip tied right there. Yeah, this one goes up front though too. Mm -hmm. This one is 
Let's eliminate these zip ties. I guess this one was up for too, huh? Perhaps. Uh, well, for right now, we'll just put it aside and then... Oh, that's just an electric cable. Wet. Uh, I guess probably the rest of these actually go up front, huh? This one goes over on the other side. What does that go? This way. What? Pull it that we'll way? Pull it this way. I think it's just a matter of snaking everything through a couple of the cross members on the frame. We'll just do the hydraulics and then we'll just snippity snip all the electronics. So we're going to have a little race. We got a plate to cut and it's exactly the same on both sides. And I'm going to use a grinder and Pat's going to use the sawzall blade. We're going to see who wins. So I got this one. You ready? On your mark. Get set. Go. you right there that's just huh it's just no comparison I, i'm probably a third of the way through yeah i got like three quarters of the way and then i flipped on the other side and did the, the rest of the quarter and it's done huh once i went through the last little bit of it it kind of dropped down and pinched the blade huh well let me see what this can do I don't think this blade is even affected yet. Nope. So now that we got these two straps cut, there is a U-bolt all the way up there on both sides. That holds on the front of the bed. So we just need to get those two U-bolts and then we're gonna cut the frame right here, right after this shackle. Actually, you know, I think it'd be a better idea to cut the frame first. Because if for some reason, because right now that U-bolt was holding the cantilevered. Yeah. 
You know, this frame must be a different type of material because it's not cutting as easy. Probably hard as steel. I wonder if I shouldn't just get the plasma cutter out. I don't I don't think I have enough lead on that thing. Boy, that's the only way to do it right there, boy. <laughs> Even the sawzall is no match for that. Yeah.
95 miles a gallon without all that weight. Yeah. That looks like a real truck now. For two reasons. Not just the bed, but that eight feet of frame on the back that didn't need to be there. That was just obnoxious. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're usually about 35 inches. Like your ram is like double that. Yeah. No, it's about the same, but you would think it would be different for a big truck like this. All right, so I think the plan moving forward here is gonna be, for this video anyways, I wanna get everything cleaned up. We got a giant mess around here. And then I wanna get this mobile again, which means taking all the wires and probably just right now temporarily putting wire nuts on them just so that nothing like sparks out or arcs out or something and then i want to be able to hook back up the batteries and get this thing moving again so that i'm not limited to what i can do with it because without starting it you got to be able to cage the brakes and everything and i'd just rather not deal with that if i can get it started and get the air moving then i can get this truck moving and i can move it around so it's not like in my way because i'm not sure how much more i'm going to work on it right now i kind of want to build my garage first so i think for right now we'll just tomorrow we'll work on getting all these hoses out figured out um probably pulling them all the way to the front or to the pump or wherever they go to just getting them out of there then getting the electric squared away. There is two air lines that I cut in the back, but that's most likely for the trailer brakes. I'm sure of it. So with that, um, probably could just leave that alone, actually. I'd probably just spew out air when I hit the brakes, but that's fine. And then we can get this thing moving again. And then we'll see what the plan is from there.
with a half inch stick. They're much worse on the face. They were in the face. Yeah. That's all the officers are for this. They should be uh, very, very bad for this. If I remember correctly, the positive was on the outside, right? Something else. Let's see here. Um, yeah, I guess I'll try it. Works. Yeah. It's so touchy that every time you hit a bump, it makes your foot move. All right, so one of the goals that I had was to try to get this truck on the low boy. I think it's just a little bit too long still, but there's not much we can do about it at this point. I got it as short as possible. Let's just see what we got to do to get it on there though. It'll be 
like really close. bumper on it wouldn't work. Yeah, I know, right? That's like, I don't know. Not even two inches? Right, guys so I'm really happy with the way this truck looks and this is the one time where looks actually matter with me I don't normally care about cosmetic stuff but this truck I want to look really good so I'll be spending a lot of time on cosmetics and we, we obviously have a lot of work ahead of us with this this is gonna be a long series of videos gotta get this frame in shape I'm gonna build a bed for it I'm gonna build some boxes probably build a fuel tank and like I said it'll probably be a dumping flatbed with removable sides and a removable back to it so that way if I want to use it to go and get a couple loads of gravel or something I can do that or I can just keep it a flatbed I want it to be very universal so I can do many different things with it because I have property up in the Adirondacks and this is going to be going up there a lot we'll probably tow machines up there with it and then once I get there I can Put the sides on and I can go get a load of gravel or two and stuff like that so it'll be really useful for that kind of situation and that's the whole point of getting an extended cab so that I can put the family in there and take long trips with it and just in general be really comfortable inside of it because it's not comfortable and it's not fun to ride in a dump truck or just a single cab in general so like I said I do need to get this inspected before I can get it registered so the guy I bought it from was nice enough to let me use his dealer plate to get home, but I can't drive it on the road right now until I get everything all squared away with it. So I do need to work on, the first thing I need to work on anyways is gonna be just getting it inspected, which at this point, I still need to go over the brakes. I still need to go over the lights. The lights it has none right now, but that should be pretty simple. Um, this, this harness right here should be the one that has all the lights on it. And then this is all the wires that I just temporarily wire nutted because um, this is probably to all the stuff that was on the bed. So I, I don't think I'm gonna need any of that stuff. So slowly we'll get that taken care of, but for right now it's not a big concern. My main goal right now was just to get the trucks, both of these, because I got a decent deal on both of them. I paid nine grand for this one, or 8,900 anyways, and I paid 45 for that. So the way I figured it is right off the bat, I got about $1,000 worth of steel that I can bring to the scrapyard. And the hoses, I have like hundreds of feet of hoses now of all different sizes. So in the future, when I get my garage built, I'm going to get a hose crimper. That way I can start utilizing those hoses because they're all pretty good 
they're in good shape. So right off the bat, I know I got $1,000 worth of steel, probably got $2,000 worth of hoses. And with this truck, I'd like to take the axles off and probably replace it with these axles. That way it's drivable again after that. And then I'd like to sell that truck. Now, the only thing with that truck is I don't have a title for it. That was one of the things about it. But it was cheap enough where I figured I could use the axles off of it and then sell the rest of it for two or three grand or something. And then somebody will buy it for a site truck for that kind of money. Somebody with a farm or something, or just somebody that needs to move a lot of dirt on their property. It's, it's worth two or three grand all day. It's got a pretty heavy capacity on it. Uh, 35,000 pound GVW so that's uh, I don't know that's that's somewhere around 10 and a half tons almost 11 tons but obviously if you're on your own property you can put whatever you want in so 12 13 tons whatever to make it road worthy it's it's not worth it for me um, I'm sure I could get the title for it there is a process to do that it came from a municipality like a town so I'm sure I could do the whole process with the DMV to get the title and I may I'm not sure but I guess there's no point in that until I see if somebody wants it first I, I guess I'll put it for sale and then if nobody wants it because it doesn't have a title then maybe I'll pursue that but for right now I think somebody would probably buy this pretty quickly so you know let's say nine grand into that 45 into that so that's 13 five so let's just say a thousand dollars worth of hoses a thousand dollars worth of scrap and then if I can get hopefully three grand for that that's like five grand coming back to me, so that brings the price down a lot. So like I said, putting the four wheel drive components from that truck into this truck is not gonna be something I'm gonna do right away. I definitely wanna get this truck squared away first and drive it a lot first. Cause there was an issue while I was driving it where it seemed like it was slightly defueling. And I don't know what that was about. I gotta do some research on it. Could be like a coolant sensor or something. I know that happened a few times with my, my Freightliner semi truck. Let me know if you guys know what that might be with it slightly defueling because it was losing power and it was kind of sporadic. It was like, rear, rear, rear. not like drastic like that. It was not even almost noticeable, but I, I could notice it. I don't know what that was about. So if anybody has a DT-466 and they know what that might be, or they have even this truck with a DT-466, then let me know what that might be because I'd be curious to know. Could be something like injectors or something. I did check for blow-by and it really doesn't have much at all, but this engine is a sleeved engine, so even if it has blow-by, I was actually considering buying a truck with a bad motor in it and a bad transmission or an automatic transmission, which is also, I would consider that a bad transmission as well, but I was considering getting something where it was just like a good cabin frame and then I was going to rebuild everything. So the fact that this has a good transmission and it has a good motor in it, then that's a, a big step ahead. That's why I considered paying more for this truck, even though I, I wanted to get it for a lot cheaper, but um, it, it does save me a lot of work not having to either put an engine in or rebuild it and then also the transmission. But anyways, I'm sure I've rambled on enough about this truck. You'll be seeing it a lot in the future and I'll keep you updated on all the different things that I do and we'll take it one step at a time and we'll get this thing almost like a showpiece. It'll be like one of the very few things that I own that'll be like that. But anyways, guys, that's it for this video and I will catch you on the next one.